Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. Another week and another show coming to you. Um, it is um, high, high allergy season now as things are blooming here in Arizona. So if I sound nasally or a little bit deeper voice, uh, that is the reason. So I apologize now. If you're seeing this, you might notice that I'm, my nose is running a little bit. You might hear me. So I'm, I apologize. It has not been um, very pretty the last couple of days. But uh, I wanted to get on. And, you know, I really was, um, we got Limb Loss Awareness Month coming in April. And I have been hard at work trying to solidify some speakers for this coming month. I've got some people um, that are ready to go. And I'm very excited for you to meet. I think you don't want to miss it. There's some stories to be told, some um, situations that are different than mine. And um, some fascinating folks I'm going to be talking to through the month of April. But between this show and next show, you know, I was trying to figure out how I wanted to approach what's going on. And, you know, I usually speak with my heart and what's happening in uh, my life and what's going on. That's why it's a personal journey podcast. But I'm also hoping that it helps and motivates others. What I have been dealing with and, and it makes me sad is, is I've I'm seeing a lot of people struggling right now, a lot of people suffering, a lot of people going through really hard times and not even just their own um, own situation, but family members or, or um, friends. And, you know, it's interesting because I'm at a cusp now where I have now been, um, I have officially had my prosthetic for three years as of the 21st. And so what that means is it's pretty much insurance time again, which I really hope does not mean another fight for a leg. I have put on several million steps on my prosthetic since having it three years and like t two days, I think. And, um, <clears throat> And it's, um, you know, they have a certain lifespan. It's, you don't get one prosthetic for the rest of your life. And when you're younger and you've had it, you're going to go through a couple of them. Problem is that three years ago, my insurance company and I, we fought for it. Like I had to fight. Um, they changed some wording and I had to deal with the difference between powered and electric. Um, for those of you that don't understand all of this lingo, Basically, a powered prosthetic or a powered appliance in insurance terms is something that basically, if you've ever seen people putting on those legs, so to speak, <clears throat> there are devices that go around their legs and they actually help them lift them up out of chairs and help them walk, almost like robotic if for those people that may be wheelchair bound or whatever. That's powered. My prosthetic is electric. So like your phone, I plug my prosthetic leg in every night. If I don't, I probably get two days of charge out of it, but I really use and abuse mine for long periods of time. So it goes on at about six o'clock in the morning. It doesn't come off till I go to bed, which can range anywhere from 10 to 12. And um, in that charge, I, I use a lot of charge. So I can get two days out of my charge, but that's about it. So I do plug mine in every day, but it is electric. Originally, when I was planning on the amputation, I had confirmed with my insurance and it was the best advice I was given by my, my general practitioner. He said, "You, I know you gotta get yourself mentally in the right space and physically in the right space. He goes, but please make sure you talk to your insurance company because that can be really a slippery slope if you're not educated and you haven't confirmed things with them. So I actually went above and beyond and every couple of weeks I would call my insurance company and I would ask them about the same exact part because every time you call, you talk to somebody new. And I remember hearing from them, I think it was four calls that fall four different people, four different conversations, every single one of them said, yep, that part is a part of your plan. You're covered, no worries. December comes, I get my leg taken off. 
February comes when we put in the order. Um, I was healed. I was ready to start the process of getting a fitted prosthetic. And they said, sorry, no, it's not covered. <laughs> you can imagine the fear that ran through my body when I realized that I may never get a leg. Um, and that I am, I am by far not the only person this has ever happened to. And I am by far not the worst case scenario. There are people that wait years before they are approved. Um, I don't know how people do it. Four weeks just about did me in. I think I cried every single day for four weeks. And when Friday would come and they still had no answer for me, the weekends were so long because nobody was working on the weekends at the insurance companies. And so I had to wait till Monday to find out more information. And I did call them every day. So when I tell you to be alert and be proactive with insurance companies and things, this is what I'm talking about. You can't wait and sit back because to them, you're just a number. They get paid no matter what happens. Those people that are on those calls, you need to see if you can't get someone that's higher up in the um, in their insurance office and start talking every single day and let them know what this means to you. Apologies, I'm like this allergy stuff. Um, so anyways, here I am now three years later and at three years, that's when the insurance companies are supposed to allow for another reevaluation from your doctor, from your prosthetic prosthetist, and then you can file for a new one. Now, some people don't need one at three years because they don't use it as much, but I um, use mine every day, all day long. I hike in it. I do all my activities in it. I work out in it. It is used and abused and loved. So I am now at that point. So I do know that our insurance had changed a little bit. We actually got a little bit better plan. So I'm hoping, knock on wood, that this year will be a little bit easier. But I'm ready to fight if I must. That being said, as I sit here and I think about all these things going on, I was in my doctor's office yesterday for my reevaluation. They have to be the ones that say, yep, she's definitely using it. Yep, she's definitely um, going to need a new one. It is it is getting beat up. Um, and he, I remember talking to my doctor, and I really just, I love my doctor. He's been on, he was on last April for Limb Loss Awareness Month. I took you guys through the people that helped me get from point A to point B with my amputation and he was the one that did the amputation and I went in and he's like so how you doing and I said you know I'm great I said yes I have some issues yeah I'm not fitting my socket as well as I'd like to I said but it could be worse and I can either choose to complain about it and make my life miserable or I can choose to live and um that's what I want to talk to you about right now when I talk about mindset a lot, I this is what I'm talking about. Like things are not perfect. They're never going to be perfect. And I know that my expectations for what I'll be able to do are high, but my expectation on pain or comfort isn't as high because I don't want to, um, I don't want to put undue distress on me when I know that this is not my normal leg and it's never going to feel like my normal leg. And I will have days and moments in each day where it just doesn't feel great. And that being said, it is a mindset of, you know what? It may not be perfect, but it's great. Right now, it's good enough, right? I just want good enough to do what I want to do. And will I pay the price later? Yeah, probably. I might take my leg off and I'll feel... Um, I usually go to bed with phantom sensations and... It stinks. I have to readjust, readjust, readjust. And I pretty much finally just fall asleep because I just can't handle it anymore. And so I just deal with it. I try to find points that I can put pressure on with my other knee into the back of my residual limb. And a pressure point there will help kind of help me find a little bit of, um, you know, just calm so it's not hurting me or whatever. And for those of you that watch the show, you know that I have a puppy She's making me a bit nervous. She, here she is. There's, this is Maggie May. Um, for those of you watching, um, she's wandering around, and I'm hoping she doesn't have to go to the bathroom because I'm not stopping. <laughs> she's gonna have to deal with it. Um, but anyways, 
I wanted to bring this up because as I'm sitting here thinking, I met with a girlfriend today and she has a lot of medical issues and that makes me sad because I know she struggles. Um, I pray for her often and we meet when we can and she knows that she's always in my mind and everything. I also know a family who's struggling with their, their child having cancer and they just brought in hospice and um, are taking her on a trip to the ocean and that really hits home because I've worked for St. Jude. Um, that's how I met these this family. And uh, my heart just breaks for them because I did meet um, the family when I was in Memphis at a St. Jude event. And I think, oh my gosh. And you know, and then there are several people that have posted that their lifelong furry family member um, passed and they didn't have the heart to say anything like last week or whatever, and they're trying to just deal. And for people that use them, especially as service animals, um, they become more in, uh, a part of their life than even the average pet. And that's what this person was dealing with. And I sit there and I go, gosh, you know what? I have it so good. I am so lucky, I am so fortunate that I was able to make this decision for my own life, that I, know how to distract myself and keep myself busy enough that being an APT is a piece of cake compared to A, what I was dealing with before and B, what m so many people are dealing with today. And, you know, that's kind of the avenue I wanted to go today was the fact that our mindset can dictate our happiness and the joy that we find in our faith, our faith that things are where they're supposed to be and what is meant for our life will will bring us some peace will bring you some peace i know it brings me peace to know that i am doing the best i can to live the kind of life that is um honoring uh of, of my faith and and still being spot on as as a mom and a wife as much as i can doing the stuff around the house and doing all that my limb loss does not dictate my life or my happiness. Um, I am me. No matter what my body looks like, I am me. My personality, my um, my type A personality that never sits down, my wanting to do certain things, my perfectionist attitude, all those things. No matter what you do, you take all four of my limbs, I am still me. And I want you to know this, that you are you. Whatever is in your heart and whatever you display for the world to see, that is you. Good and bad, um, good days and bad days, right? No matter what you are medically going through, whatever you're emotionally going through, whatever you're mentally going through, you don't have to let that dictate your happiness and you don't have to let it um, disable you, become your disability right? And so I would just encourage you to maybe be sure that, you know, one way for me, one way that I have found has helped me deal with becoming an amputee and dealing with being an amputee on a day-to-day -day basis, like the pains that I deal with or the ill fit or whatever's going on, is to reach out to others, to really see the world for what it is and to understand that what you have going on, yeah, it may be bad. I, I'm not going to downplay whatever anybody else is going through, but there is always someone worse off than where you're at. There is. No matter what. I, I just, I could never imagine having um, a child with cancer. And I know several of you are going through that. And my prayers and my love are with you. Um, for those of you that have lost someone close to you, dear to you, I'm I'm with you. I'm so sorry. And I'm, I'm sad that you're there. Remember that we can decide how we how we handle our life and what hand we're dealt. And I know there's a saying out there that says, you know, God doesn't give you more than you can handle. But I really believe that God gives you what you can handle based on the fact that he's prepped you for it. My amputation I was not ready to handle uh, back in 2013 when I hurt myself or even 14 or 15. But by the time I had exhausted everything and worked everything through 
and mentally wrap my head around it, I was ready. So when you look back, hindsight is beautiful, right? You see the things that have kind of paved the way. And, and quite frankly, life is just a big journey, right? A great adventure is what Peter Pan said. And I actually put that on one of my posts yesterday. Um, life is, is just but one big adventure. Um, and to live is an awfully big adventure. And so doing things that can make you happy and reaching out to those that are less fortunate than you, than you. And there are so many people out there that are less fortunate than where you're at. Even in your worst times, there's still gonna be someone else that's going through something that, and everyone's story is different, right? Like some people could not handle being an amputee. And I get that, but God didn't prep you for that. He prepped me for that. And so my heart and my mind and my faith were all stacked and ready to go for this. Some of you have something going on that I could never deal with, but God didn't prep me for that. He prepped you for that. So when we go on our journeys of life, we all go through certain aspects to build ourselves up to deal with what we're dealing with. And what we're dealing with now is in place to help us deal with something down the road, which can be frightening to think about. So don't think about that, right? Live right now, live in the present, live where you're at. And that's that's where you're going to find your happiness. That's where you're going to find what you can handle. Um, God isn't asking you to handle what's coming because he doesn't, he hasn't placed that in your eyesight yet. And, um, you know, my faith has really guided me in all that I have done. And I believe now after seeing things and looking backward, I can see how this was all set in motion. So it makes it easier for me to handle. Plus, like I said, mindset is everything. So when I'm dealing with everything I'm dealing with, it's not like it was just thrown at me. All of a sudden one night I woke up and I, you know, some people, yeah, that's, that's your journey. You got into an accident. Um, I know a lot of people that lost limbs because of motorcycle accidents. You didn't expect that to happen. And that is, that is part of your journey is dealing with the mental aspect and the anguish that you deal with on that. My mental game was already in, in place before the surgery. And then I had to deal with the physical, right? And so each one of us has that different journey. None is worse or better than the other, depending on how you handle it. But just know that you're never alone. And when I say there are people that are worse off than you, you know, I say that with a grain of salt because, like I said, they are handling it the way they need to handle it because that's the journey they're on. But when you think about what you're going through, think about how many things you wouldn't want to go through that you see others going through, you know. And, and it is a situation where I'm grateful for where I'm at. I'm happy where I'm at. I don't regret my decision to amputate. Um, if I regret it, then I can't live moving forward. I'm going to live in the past. And that is not where I want to be because the past wasn't fun. So acceptance and the realization that it could be different, could be worse, but I control how I handle it. And and that's where I want you guys to be. I want you to see that, that that there are people that you need to reach out to, that you could speak to. Um, that's one of the reasons why I did the podcast is because there might be one of you out there that gets something from this. And I always said, you know, I don't need a thousand followers. I don't care. You know, I can't, I can't get wrapped up in that. That's, that's horrible, a horrible place to be. And I did get that way a while ago, but really the reality is if I can help one person handle the situation they're in, then I've done what I wanted to do. If I can shed light and give someone hope, just one person hope this week on that they can make it through to the next week or the next week or the next week, then I've done everything I've set out to do. I just want to make a difference. I want to, I want to know that what my story can bring is hope to somebody else. So knowing this, I would just say that this week I'm doing a really short podcast. One, because I can't even breathe. This allergy thing is killing me. But I'm going to wrap this up really quick here. And the call to action this week, like I always end every episode with, 
is something for you to actually tangibly do and go out in the world with. And I think that this week, the best call to action I can give you is to go out, seek out that friend that you haven't talked to in a while that you know is struggling with something and, and do something for them. Be kind to them. Take them a coffee. Ask to meet up with them. Um, you know, it does wonders both ways. I met with my girlfriend today I haven't seen in months, and it was wonderful to talk to someone and to see somebody else's perspective in life. Um, in my household, I'm the only one dealing with something medically like this. I'm not the only one dealing with something. I got a kid in college dealing with college. I got a kid in high school dealing with high school and my husband working really, really hard in long hours. So we all have our journeys and our own life stories, but I'm the only one dealing with medical. So I sometimes can get wrapped up in myself knowing that I'm struggling today because of this or that and phantom sensations at night that aren't letting me sleep or whatever. Then I step outside my world and I get with someone who is dealing with something else besides what I'm dealing with. And it gives me perspective, right? Perspective is a wonderful thing. I'm not so bad. I can do this. And it gives me a purpose. So now I know where my friend's at. Now I know what she needs for me and where my prayers need to be for her and what I can do to help and reach out to her and make sure that she is doing well before May and hopefully a surgery in May. So that that's where I'm at. And that gives me, like I said, a perspective that's outside of my realm. And it takes me out of my own head, my own life, my own journey, and, and, and projects it out where I can be helpful to someone else. So that's your call to action. Reach out to someone. Even if it's someone you haven't talked to for several months, a year, a couple years, make amends with someone that you know is struggling right now. Do something in a positive light that will bring joy or a happiness or a relief to someone else that might be really struggling today. And you know what? You can challenge yourself to maybe do something each day this next week until we meet again next Wednesday. Maybe um, one person a day you reach out to. All it takes is a text, a phone call, an email. Even snail mail is wonderful. No one ever does snail mail anymore. I don't know why. But um, sometimes that little extra step you you don't know who that might save and you know what it might actually save you if you're struggling right now and you need some hope sometimes the best thing to do is to step outside of yourself in your life and journey down someone else's path for a minute see where they're at and um, you might just end up making a world of difference in two different people's lives so until next time and I apologize for the shortness of this one. I just cannot breathe <laughs> and it is not attractive. Um, so I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And as always, be healthy, be happy, be you.